What's up guys, today I wanna to cover seven perfect Amazon FBA niches you can start your first product in. So I'm gonna go through each seven of these niches and kinda of do some product research with you and kinda of deep dive into and why I like these niches uh, for you to start your first product in and just kinda of get my overall thinking of you know how I do product research, what I'm looking for, you know how I attack certain products, things like that. Uh, so this is a great video for you if you're looking to get started on your first product on Amazon FBA or just looking to start your you know second, third, fourth product or just learn more in general. Just one quick thing before we get started guys, uh, for anybody new to this channel, my name is Cameron James. I've been selling on Amazon FBA for about three years now and in my first year selling on Amazon, I was actually in an engineering school uh, you know, grilling chicken at Chick-fil-A, uh, just you know, trying to get by, trying to get my degree, everything like that. Uh, we ended up doing $1.3 million uh, in sales on Amazon FBA. So showing you that anybody can start this business. You know, if I could cook chicken and start an Amazon FBA business, uh, that means you most likely can too. So if you guys want to learn more about my Amazon FBA journey, learn more about you know everything I know about Amazon FBA, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that little notifications bell. Uh, that way you guys do not miss a thing and you can follow along and learn uh, as I go on. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So without wasting any more of your guys' time, let's just dig right into it. So digging into my screen here, guys, let's just get started. So on Amazon's front page, how we're gonna go through this, I wanna show you these seven niches that you can potentially sell in your first product, the ones that I love to start with, uh, ones that I really love just in general, and all the reasons why, uh, which I'll explain here once we go over them. I'm gonna go to the Amazon uh, just.com homepage right here. I'm actually gonna go to new releases. So in new releases, you can see that we have all these Amazon FBA categories uh, right here. So Amazon lists out all these categories that products are in. And there's obviously some categories that are better than others, right? Especially for private label sellers, people like you and me, uh, who are just trying to sell uh, you know, products that are not so branded and that don't have such high barriers of entry. So we can just get started right here. Uh, so the first category, you know, going down this list, we can see there's just, there's so many categories here. And I'm not saying these seven are, you know, the best ones out there for you, okay? So there's gonna be certain scenarios where uh, certain categories work for you uh, versus others. Uh, these are not limitations for you guys. I just wanna give out my seven best uh, niches. That way you guys can see how my brain works uh, and kind of see and get a jump start to this whole, you know, looking for your first product because I know how, uh, you know, hard it could be to get started and because, you know, we just don't know where to look at first. And so the first one we're gonna look at is baby, guys. So if I just open this up in a new tab, uh, we can start looking right down here. We're just gonna go through uh, each seven. We're gonna try to find a product in each category and I'm gonna tell you why and all that good stuff right here. Uh, so we see uh, right now, obviously during this time, we're gonna see a lot of, uh, you know, quarantine products, things like that, uh, which is unfortunate because usually these, you know, these new releases, you know, these, you know, top 100 products are very helpful to get ideas from. Uh, but, you know, with, with, you know, high sales with these products going on right now, uh, they're not the best, uh, you know, it's not the best grid essentially uh, to, to look at here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start niching down to get more ideas. So, you know, if any of these categories look, you know, uh, intriguing to you, that's the one I, I suggest you going down first, you know. And so we can, we can go down and do like, you know, travel gear right here, right. So go to travel gear. I like travel gear just because, you know, it's, things are gonna be different, right? There's not gonna be mainstream products and travel gear. There's gonna be a lot of things that are, are new, always coming out to make it more convenient. And so that's why I like travel gear. You can see right here uh, that we go through uh, even more categories we can keep going down into, which is just uh, incredible. That's why Amazon's so crazy, just because there's so many different products and product niches out there. So when I pick my sub niche, and I kind of like what I'm seeing, right? I, I like the, the niche, the category. I want to go down through uh, this top sellers list and try to get product ideas of my own. So, you know, baby uh, being one of my favorite niches just because there's so many different weird products out there, right? So we got this battery operated uh, stroller fan, right? It goes on your stroller. You can see these little uh, flexi uh, grips, things like that. A universal stroller cup holder. Uh, we got baby seat covers. Uh, we have a carrier. Uh, let's see, hassle-free baby wrap sling, uh, which is a little more mainstream, but we can see there's already different weird ideas out there. So, uh, you know, when we're doing product research, we want to be creative. We want to be different from everybody else. We don't want to put the same exact products on Amazon like everybody else, which I'll go through a little bit more as we start to look at, you know, products uh, more on an individual level. So what I'm going to do here, guys, just, you know, just uh, to get more ideas rolling to get your to get you inside my head a little more is I'm just going to open up a new tab for any product that I think is interesting. And so, you know, I like the cup holder here, uh, baby head protector and knee pads. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, Disney Mickey Mouse, you know, if it's um, copyrighted or anything like that or branded, uh, you want to stay away from that. But it uh, doesn't mean we can't do a diaper bag, you know, in a different uh, style or a different design. We just can't do a Mickey Mouse one. Keep going down. Uh, pregnancy seat belt adjuster. Okay, that's interesting. 
uh, car headrest pillow u-shaped uh, that could be pretty cool uh, we see a little fans right now obviously it's summer so uh, you're going to see a lot of cooling products a lot of covers to keep the sun away from uh, baby so we have to keep in mind that right some products could be seasonal which uh, there are ways to look at uh, you know google trends and then uh, on your chrome extensions whether jungle scout viral launch uh, helium 10 uh, you can see the seasonality of products based on their bsr which all that is is their seller's rank which is not too complicated don't think about it too much uh, we can keep going down here uh, bump belt adjuster bicycle seat for child that's interesting right here uh, keep going down keep going down uh, lucky love diaper bag or organizing pouches set of four including diaper right here um, all right so let's check these four out right here real quick and so we can see this is just a simple cup holder right we can put it on uh, whatever it could be in your bathroom it could be uh, right here it could be you know uh, wherever essentially right uh, I had a universal stroller cup so I thought maybe it was for strollers uh, and it still might be but uh, I'm not sure so let's real quick look at the sales guys uh, just use helium 10 Chrome extension real quick and we can see it's doing about ten thousand uh, dollars in revenue which is plenty right it's just a piece of plastic essentially uh, let's go to all time it just started let's see 528.20 so not that long ago uh, about a month ago exactly uh, sales rank has got steady so it, it launched very quickly and it got to steady sales uh, you know pretty fast right for a month uh, that's pretty great and so we go to you know universal stroller cup holder right here let's take a look at the market as a whole let's see if there's uh, opportunities out there essentially so we see we have uh, you know some generic ones right here two packs uh, keep going down we have some weird looking ones right here which is always good you know you want variations you want uh, different options to to get better products out there and we can see the pink one right here let's go to helium 10 and let's see if the the whole market looks like as a whole and we can see this first guy which is sponsored right here is doing 106,000. but if we go to the first uh, organic one 62,000, 49,000, 9,000, 13,000, 64,000 uh 4 000, 10 000, 64 it looks like the same product here just one sponsor um 106 right here uh, let's go to this one real quick looks like just a carrier bag for a stroller just in general there uh, which is a great idea as well and so we can see that there's different ideas there's different variations of this you know cup holder for strollers out there so we can go ahead and pick the best ones we can pick different ones uh, we can brand it better right so uh, if we go into uh, this guy right here you could see how generic this is right and so if we have a generic product it's going to be very very easy to mimic or copy uh, so we want to find a new design we want to find uh, you know different colors we want to put our brand on it that way people see our brand and know our brand and know it's different i know it's got a lot of reviews here but you know when we start talking about uh, you know branding our products uh, finding new product designs uh, making new colors with it you can see this one uh, you know, it sticks out right we see black cup holder black cup holder black cup holder and then we have this guy right here uh, who sticks out and if we go into this listing real quick let's see what, what he's doing in sales uh, just to make sure that you know my theory is right here that this guy's going to do uh, pretty okay with a very saturated niche just because he's different yep 14,000 right here this guy is you know different colorful he sticks out you can see his brand right here uh, we have great images right here as well uh, Bricka, I think it's called I uh, could be uh, uh, pronouncing it wrong in there but we can see uh, that this guy has a brand and it's you know it sticks out everything like that we see you know the same stroller covers right here uh, you know black design very generic and we have something new right here which is the product we found uh, to begin with so if we find something new and we start to brand it we can we can be different from everybody else you know people are buying this with 25 reviews because it's different even though this top guy up here if we go all the way to the top here he's got 3,000 almost 4,000 reviews now so when you're first thinking you're like oh there's 4,000 reviews for the top guy I'm never gonna get any sales well that's not necessarily true because we can see right here that this guy with 25 uh, is getting sales with uh, you know the same essentially the same product uh, but you know at $16 for this little cup holder too you know with 25 reviews that's that's pretty incredible so I just want to show you guys that and show you guys the endless options the baby category really has when it comes to one single product with a high demand uh, and this is the perfect example of this it's just a cup holder uh, for strollers and there's already three or four different designs for this that are all doing 10,000 plus uh, in sales per month so uh, just you know just for the sake of time let's not go through these ones uh let's go through another niche uh to make sure we're getting through uh, everything for you guys here and so if we go to the next one uh, we just did baby here let's do beauty and personal care so niche number two uh, that is perfect to find your first product in now 
beauty and personal care, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's a little harder to get into, okay? So the product uh, research, the, you know, finding the right manufacturer uh, for something that, you know, potentially could go in your face or in your mouth or on your skin or on your clothes or anything like that, uh, you're gonna have to have a high quality product made here, uh, most likely in the USA or Canada, or Europe or Australia, uh, you know, a first world country, you can't, you know, you don't wanna get these things made in China, it's a little harder uh, for people to understand and, and trust these products, uh, whether they're safe or not safe. So again, we see uh, with the situation here, we're just gonna see a bunch of uh, uh, quarantine products. We're gonna skip that and let's go find a sub niche we can possibly find uh, different products in here. So if you guys are scared of the makeup and the fragrance and the foot and hand nail cream or the, you know, the face cream, things like that, go to tools and accessories. That's a great place to start, uh, to start looking for, you know, different products that uh, you know, maybe that don't, you know, require you to you know, manufacture in the USA. Uh, but if you guys want to do like face cream or anything like that, uh, there is a great potential on there just because there's a huge barrier of entry. So not a lot of people want to put in that work and there's you know, millions and millions of dollars of, of sales going through uh, for different types of products. And there's always a new product coming out, whether it's, you know, aloe hand cream or aloe face cream, uh, you know, sugar scrub or so every, every week I, I see my girlfriend has this new scrub or this new lotion or this new, you know, whether it's charcoal scrub or sugar scrub or aloe scrub, it just keeps going on and it keeps evolving. So it's a perfect example of a niche that, that always has opportunity and, and always can create space, you know, if you find a hole in that market. Okay, so, but we're gonna do, uh, just for the example here, we're gonna do uh, beauty tools and accessories just because it's a little more easy to grasp uh, and get a hang of there. So we go down here to, uh, you know, petal shaped makeup brush, which is kind of cool. Let's open that up. Um, you know, the, I'm looking for products that are different, weird right here. So, you know, scissors don't really care about unless there's some cool new design or something like that. Uh, I go down here, a lot of makeup stuff a lot of haircut trimmers, everybody's stuck inside uh, summer. It's a great time to uh, go ahead and, you know, you know, shave your head or whatever, do haircuts at home. Uh, this guy looks weird, not sure what he is, so I'm gonna click on him. Uh, that's super cool. Uh, finishing touch, flawless new razor, portable cordless, rechargeable electric razor, which is a terrible sounding title, uh, but kind of interesting there. Uh, it's kind of new and shiny, kind of sticks out. Uh, let's keep going down here. Uh, let's go to two, page two right here. And we keep looking, we got Green Life, not sure, Ad Life. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. After reading the title, keep going down, keep going down. Uh, lots of electric shavers here. Uh, if you guys are you know, having trouble finding products like this, just go niche down another one. So bags and cases, cotton balls and swabs, makeup brushes, mirrors, skincare tools. So skincare tools, uh, go down here, we got tweezers. Uh, we got extending adjustable mask ear strap. Don't want that. Uh, keep going down, keep going down, uh, keep going down. Uh, actually, I actually have an idea in this niche that I, I saw not too long ago. Let's just do that one. Uh, so let's we go to uh, all departments here. It's actually, I saw this the other day, just kind of doing some research for fun. Uh, it's the cuticle, uh, what do you call it? Snippers? Snipper, maybe? Uh, I'm probably getting that wrong, but I'm close. Trimmer, it'd be cuticle trimmer. So let's go back and get the right keyword. That way we see every product. Uh, so we go cuticle trimmer. Uh, we'll start here and then we'll go over to the other ones we found there. Uh, but we just go uh, to Helium 10 right here. We can see people are doing crazy sales with cuticle trimmers, right? Uh, so 430,000, 5,000, 14,000, 33,000, 17,000, 50,000. Uh, we go over to reviews and we see, you know, this guy doing 14,000 got 55 reviews. I always like to see, you know, high sales uh, with low reviews here, especially when there's a review count, you know, when a guy's doing 2,700 reviews, 1,200 reviews. This just means that there's, you know, still more opportunity out there. 96 reviews, which is still lower. Uh, 13,000 here, 93 uh, reviews, 10,000 here. So I want to take a look at this guy doing 55 uh, reviews in 14,000. So we click into here, and the first thing I see is that it's super colorful. So it sticks out. You see the brand right here. Maybe uh, they could do a better job of, of making it more visible. Uh, you know, the pictures are kind of generic, but it, it definitely stands out. Uh, you know, this uh, peach emojis, I'm not sure uh, if I like that or not, uh, but it does stick out. Uh, the listing is kind of uh, pretty generic. I don't think this is, maybe this is just a Chinese brand. So there's, yeah, this product description is not very good. It could be a lot better. Uh, so this is not, you know, a, a great branding, uh, you know, or a great branded listing on Amazon. So it's doing super well, 55 reviews. Uh, I'm guessing it's just because of this color right here. So we go back to cuticle trimmer. 
Uh, we hit exit here. Uh, we can see it sticks out, right? It stands out from the rest of the pack, which is great. But what stops me from going and copying this guy uh, straight up? And there's 20 of these guys, right? So we have to think about here is, is how do I you know, sustain? How do I have uh, the best product of those 20 products that are gonna be uh, coming in? So uh, the first thing I think of uh, as we go back to this listing here is this listing is terrible, right? I don't think this is a high quality brand, you know, when, you know, when looking through this. And so what I would do if I started something like this, you know, I would make sure that it looks great. It, it has a, a brand presence to it. You know, it, it, it has something to it. You clearly know what brand this is, whether it's, you know, Cuticle Pro Plus, which is a terrible brand name, never do that, but it's a great example. Uh, right here in the, in the front uh, with a great reading title, with great bullets, and a great description and there's you know 10 other products you have in this category eventually you know you shouldn't be thinking about that right away but eventually down the line you're going to want a brand uh you know and have horizontal products around there because it's just going to bring more brand presence uh to your amazon brand which then you can evolve it to you know shopify and things like that uh you know if the people you know buy your cuticle trimmers they come back for your nail clippers or whatever you know maybe cuticle trimmers isn't the best example just because it, it is such a generic product but there's ways to make this better there's, there's ways to be uh, the best brand in this niche. Uh, it just takes some research. It takes some, uh, you know, great photos, great listings, things like that. Uh, we can see there's already copycats coming in. Uh, I guess 1204, maybe this guy's the copycat. <laughs> He's just doing it a little better. Uh, but we can see, you know, what makes these things stand out is, is color. Maybe, maybe so you have four or five different colors. I'm guessing these are not uh, very expensive to get going. Uh, but if we just make sure that we take the time to build the listing right, build the brand right, we'll be there to stay around for the long haul and not get suffocated by everybody else selling the same products. Okay, uh, so uh, cuticle trimmer is a good example there. Uh, just for time's sake, again, uh, these, these are just great examples of, of products I would just keep going down uh, further into and further into uh, to see if we can uh, sell right here. But uh, for time's sake, we're only on niche two, so I gotta get moving here. Uh, so if we go up here uh, into new releases, go back up here, let's go into niche number three. Uh, and that is, if we go down here, electronics. Again, this is kind of in that beauty and personal care where it's a little higher barrier of entry. Uh, manufacturing is a little harder, but uh, this is something you can get in China. You just gotta get inspections done, uh, things like that. So uh, electronics, if we go into that real quick, uh, exit out of these right here. And we can see right away, what's cool about electronics is that everything's shiny, right? People love shiny stuff. Everything's new, everything's crisp. Uh, there's this crazy electronics always evolving uh, in the world, especially in China. And so there's a great opportunity to, you know, get in on the ground floor on some new products. So if we go down and, and niche down here, you know, if you've got any interest or, or anything that kind of catches the eye, or, you know, car electronics, I know some people lo really love that. Uh, different types of headphones, cell phone accessories, accessories and supplies, GPS. Uh, so let's just pick portable audio and video and see what comes up. Uh, so we have an mp3 player you know this is not anything branded it's very generic but we can create our own brand that's the cool thing about this you know uh the you know problem with electronics is you know I, sometimes i you know i steer people away from this just because there's so many defect rates uh but you know there's you know, with, with more competition coming on Amazon, we just start thinking outside the box and start doing a little more work essentially. And, and that work is actually not that hard to get inspections done and, and make sure that you're getting, you know, high quality goods uh, made in China. So we go down here, we got an emergency flashlight with radio, which is kind of cool with the charger. Uh, this is great, you know, I actually camp quite a bit. Uh, so this would be actually a really cool product that I would like to have, uh, cause you can charge your phone. It's got flashlights, it's got a radio, uh, it's got everything like that. Uh, and so if we go, I'll just find one more idea here before we deep dive. And we go down, we see portable CD player. I didn't think that was still a thing. <laughs> uh, keep going down here, keep going down. Let's, let's niche down uh, one more here. Portable CD players, radios, uh, boom boxes, cassette, uh, MP3 and MP4 accessories. So we go into that. Uh, we can see just, you know, kind of AirPods, generic AirPods right here. I don't really like that, but let's see. There's headphones right here. Um, let's see. Anything new that catches the eye? Phone holder mount for bike handlebar. That'd be kind of cool. Let's look into that just because, you know, it's biking season right now. And I like the idea of, of niching down even further. So it's a, it's, a, it's a phone holder mount, but it's for bikes, you know? So maybe you're just getting into uh, mounts or electronic supplies for bikes in general. And that's a great way to kind of start a brand and get a brand idea. So let's go into this emergency flashlight radio right here. Uh, let's go into sales and see what's doing here. We see the top guy here doing 9,000, almost 10,000 here, which is uh, plenty enough for me, especially at a $40 price point, 27 reviews. Uh, we can see this is, I hate the big long uh, bullets here. It's just, 
I think it's terrible. Uh, we see decent photos here. They're all, I guess not decent photos, uh, uh, kind of cheesy photos, uh, you know, very uh, just done, you know, by a, maybe a guy from Fiverr, Upwork real quick. Uh, so we can definitely make this better. Uh, 2020 upgraded. Anytime you see this kind of stuff, that means they're just a Chinese seller, most likely. Uh, just trying to get a quick sale. Uh, we don't want that. We want it for the long term. So I'd brand this baby. i get great photos that's branded. I'd have my brand right here in the front of the title. I'd have you know, clean bullets. I'd have a good, you know, clean photos. Uh, I'd have, you know, enhanced brand content if I can. At first, maybe not. Uh, you know, trademark takes a while to get and costs a little bit of money. You want to prove the product first. And so, you know, I'd, I'd make sure that the brand is, is clear there, uh, you know, and make sure that I'm here for the long run and sticking out uh, and everything like that. So, you know, but 27 reviews and, and 10,000 in sales, uh, that obviously shows there's demand out there. I'm sure there's some out there that are doing uh, crazy amounts of numbers. So if we go to, uh, let's go emergency flashlight radio right down here. Uh, let's go to Helium 10. Let's look at the brand as a whole, or I guess the, the niche as a whole here. And we can see here the top guys doing 161,000, 68,000, 56,000, 60,000, 36,000, 53,000, which is uh, absolutely incredible. And you guys, you know, I'm just finding these freehand, right? So I'm doing product research just freehand with you guys just because I think it helps out a little more than if I script everything, uh, you know, and get everything perfect. Because, you know, product research isn't perfect. Amazon business isn't perfect. And so it's always better for me, I think, to freehand these things. And so these products won't be perfect, guys. But something to know is that any product idea you have before you buy them, it's not going to be perfect. There's, it's always going to be a 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10. There's never going to be a product that's 10 out of 10. Uh, you know, it's just, this just doesn't happen anymore. And so, you know, just getting these ideas and, and seeing me go through them uh, can get kind of get things turning for you. Uh, that way you can go ahead and find your own ideas like I am, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm finding 10 to 20 ideas probably in this one video alone that are potentially good products. I would deep dive into them a little more. Uh, you know, I got to look at manufacturers. I got to do all this sort of stuff, right? This is just step one. But I already have a huge list of, of products and I'm finding these very, very quickly. You can see. Uh, and so uh, I just want to show you guys how I do this, essentially. And so we look at the, the phone holder mount for bike handlebar here. Uh, we can see, again, not branded. Uh, it's probably just a Chinese seller here. Uh, if I see things like this, this is, the first thing I see is just a manufacturer most likely selling this product. Uh, I don't like uh, the infographics here, not, not branded so well. I mean, it's not terrible, but um, you know, I don't know who this company is. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we go down to... Uh, they have enhanced brand content. I got a video here, which is awesome, but it's done by Lamacall, which I'm not sure. Lamacall store, uh, maybe it's a good brand, maybe not, but uh, I'm guessing uh, not so much uh, for this. Someone probably just trying to get a quick buck uh, with their new design. Uh, but if we go down to, you know, go to all here real quick, we go to phone holder for bike. Let me go down here. We look at sales real quick. So we can see real quick the first organic search right here. These are sponsored, of course. Uh, 160,000, 228,000, 164,000, 152,000, 76,000. So what I notice is everybody's trying to sell the new latest model. Uh, obviously, it's going to fit the iPhone, but maybe you design something that's universal and you know it's going to fit every phone that eventually comes out, right? Well, every shape, size, it can compact, it can you know uh, put tension down, everything like that. So if I was going to start a product like this, which there's obviously clearly demand out there, I wouldn't go for the quick, the quick buck, the new model. I would go for quality. I would go for a brand. I would. I would try to create the best product out there in this niche that has a you know a clean cut brand and that you know will last for a long time because what happens here if they get a brand new model well most likely they got to start over from reviews or they're supposed to anyways uh, they might manipulate things a little bit but uh, you know if, if people like it and, and people are coming back and you're getting four and a half five star reviews uh, and it fits every phone well well you just shook up this market and you're gonna stick out and you're not gonna get saturated from everything else and you'll be able to compete with these guys with 13,000 1,000 1,000 2,000 reviews so again, that's why I like the electronics brand, just like Baby, just like you know uh, Beauty. It's got these ever-evolving products. It's got high demand. Uh, it's really easy to get electronics now. Uh, just a little extra work to get uh, inspections done and make sure there's you know you have low defect rates, everything like that. Uh, but let's go into the number uh, four niche here for us. So we got new releases. Uh, we go back to these categories again. Uh, nothing's holding you back from any of these other categories. I'm just trying to think of uh, my favorite categories, essentially with you know high demand, ever-changing. Uh, you know, expanding, you know, product lines, things like that. And so we go down to 
home and kitchen. This is probably the most standard of them all. Products are going to get a little easier to manufacture here uh, compared to the last few I just showed you. Uh, that was just by weird coincidence of um, you go down the list and it being alphabetical. Uh, but we can see there's, you know, there are some more advanced, you know, products here, but there is going to be some simple ones, you know, whether it's shower curtains or, or anything like that. So uh, we can see and get ideas uh, right here. Again, we're going to see a lot of bug zappers, things like that. Uh, but if we niche down, let's just, you know, see if we can figure something out real quick. Uh, vacuum, swarm, clear, storage, and organization. Uh, let's go storage and organization. Sounds really easy to uh, get into. Uh, let's see, vacuum sealer bags, extra large stainless steel kitchen utensil holder. Uh, that's interesting. I'm sure it's a big field there. Uh, let's see, airtight food storage container sets, uh, premium over the door shoe organizer. So we see home and kitchen is probably the largest uh, category and the most diverse uh, category on Amazon. Uh, paper towel holder under cabinet. Uh, we see it's kind of a cool looking design right here. Uh, just wood right here, kind of a poor, uh, poor photos. Uh, but you know, um, 999, three. Uh, three ratings here. Let's see what it's doing for sales with three ratings. Uh, that's really going to tell me a lot. If it's doing, you know, sort of well for uh, three ratings here, 2,500. Uh, so it's not crazy great. Uh, let's go back here. We can keep looking. Keep looking. Uh, mop broom holder wall mount. Uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, S-shaped dual layer bowls dishes. Okay, so let's look at that. It's like a dual level uh, dish rack there. Two tier wall mounted shelf set of two. Uh, keep going down, keep going down. Let's see if we can find anything else. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of Yeti stuff and a lot of designs for, with that kind of uh, niche and market, especially in the summer. Uh, let's keep going down. Bamboo hanging shower caddy mate. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so this has no reviews, uh, only in 20 in stock. So let's look at this and see uh, what it says for uh, sales real quick. Uh, so sales, 2400 It's kind of low for me. Uh, but I'm sure this niche as a whole does some crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, what would be the best keyword for this? So if we go to all right here, it would probably be, let's see, dish drying rack. So if we look at that. Oh, we can see there's, you know, we made a ton of different designs here. There's going to be some really high review ones. Uh, 706, 528, 2000 here, uh, 1500. We see this double uh, rack right here with 706 at a $40 price point, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, that price point is going to give you a really high margin, especially with something like that. Reload helium 10 here. We can see 136, uh, 412,000, 311,000, 460,000. Again, very kind of generic um, field, but there's so many different uh, designs. We see a double rack here. We see uh, one with a drain rack right here, one that's silver and kind of uh, modern looking, which I like. Uh, bamboo right here. We got a big rack right here for 60 bucks, which is a great price point. Any, I love high price points just because of the margins and how uh, Amazon works. The only thing you got to watch out for something like this is shipping. But if you can break this down, get it in a box, and get instructions in there, and you know it gets into a smaller box than what it, you know its actual size, uh, then your FBA fees are going to be uh, super low compared to your price point, which is awesome. And so we see there's you know different niches and different fields of drying racks and we can even do keyword research and figure out real demand uh, for what people are searching in. Maybe they're looking for a three level dish rack or a silver stainless steel dish rack or, or something like that, right? We could see real keyword data if we go to Viral Launch, uh, Helium 10, uh, Jungle Scout and we look at their keyword research tool, we can see uh, those keywords, what people are typing in and we can see if there's real demand and we could fill that hole if there's supply lacking. And so we can get ideas from this guys that, you know, maybe we have different dish racks, maybe we're in the kitchen goods, maybe uh, we niche down even further and we're just bamboo, right? Uh, bamboo dish racks. So we click into this one, let's see how he's doing. So he has 27 reviews, $27, uh, pretty generic uh, listing right here. Uh, nothing crazy going on. Let's go to Helium 10. And we can see he's only doing a, a thousand here. So uh, maybe this is not the best product for us. But if we go to the top here, let's see what the top guy's got. I saw another bamboo one right here with 1300. Uh, you know, a little better front picture here. Looks a little more clean. Let's look at his sales right here, which is uh, 59,000, almost 60,000, right? And so let's go down here. Uh, I'm going to give you a little more uh, an idea of maybe how you can figure out if this is a potential brand you could start and do bamboo uh, products. So you can see down here, you know, other products that are very similar to this one. So we have a totally uh, bamboo flatware. This is a little different. It's uh, a utensil drying caddy fits totally. Uh, bamboo dish, weird title there. But we can see this is a different design for a bamboo uh, drain rack. And so we can go through this and, and look, and we can even type in the keywords, right? That might be a little easier. Uh, and we can go to sponsored products, very similar products, uh, all bamboo. So we can see different designs. We can even go to Pinterest uh, and figure out, you know, 
Uh, if there's different bamboo designs out there that are better than this, uh, but just an idea here, let's go to uh, bamboo and maybe you just do bamboo products and you got a shower caddy uh, with your drying rack right here. So we got a hanging shower caddy uh, made from natural bamboo. Uh, I like the photos here. I don't like how they got so small. I'm not sure that might be a, a dimension error uh, on their part of putting in the wrong uh, pixel size uh, on Amazon. So let's go to x-ray real quick. So it's actually not giving us any sales data right here, uh, which might be just because it's an Amazon launch pad, which is a, a different category for uh, brand new products and kind of a new uh, designs, things like that. Uh, so we'll have to be careful about that. But uh, you guys get the idea here, uh, home and kitchen, it just goes on forever and ever. Uh, I can use the same strategies we talked about in the other niches, but uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's never gonna die, it's always gonna expand. Uh, so let's just go to the next category here, guys. So if we go back, uh, new releases. Check that out of that one real quick. So the fifth perfect niche for you guys to get started in would be kitchen and dining, okay? So uh, if you're familiar with any kitchen, it's got so many appliances, so many different tools inside, so many drawers filled with things, cabinets. And so it's just like home and kitchen where there's just gonna be an infinite amount of products that are different and new designs and all that good stuff. So it's a perfect niche you can get into because you can go down uh, in so many crazy sub niches, whether it's wine, you know, bag sets, uh, tea, coffee, espresso, you see all these ones, if I cook into cookware, it's gonna have 100 more, right? Canning, pots, pans, uh, fondue, and it's ever evolving. So we go back to kitchen and dining here, just on the homepage, we can see uh, just, you know, your standard products. You know, we have olive oil spreader, which is, you know, really cool, actually, I'd, I'd really love to use that. Uh, Gorilla Grip Original Premium Manual Can Opener. You can see here the Gorilla Grip brand, uh, it has two products in the top five of kitchen and dining. I'm sure they're doing hundreds and hundreds of thousands uh, of sales just uh, in these two products, and I'm sure they have uh, tons more. I love how they have the Gorilla Grip logo here. Uh, that way people know their brand, right? They bought the can opener, they liked it. Uh, they're just gonna go over the knife sharpener if they need that, and they're gonna buy that. I'm sure they have a Shopify store and all that good stuff. We go to X-Ray just to see the sales right here, uh, just to show you you know, what the fifth rated product uh, on new releases does. Uh, on Amazon, 47,000, uh, plus you have different variations right here. Uh, just different colors. If we go into Gorilla Grip, just to give you guys an idea, because I've been talking a lot about uh, branding lately and, and kind of you know how you do that, how you think about it. Well, Gorilla Grip, I haven't heard about this in stores. Maybe it's there. Maybe it was a brand already established, but maybe it was just an Amazon brand uh, already. So we can see, you know, they're actually everywhere: furniture covers, cutting boards, bath rugs, uh, fatigue mats, uh, shop kitchen, shop pets, uh, office and storage. Okay, so maybe there's the massive uh, Amazon brand I've never heard of before. Uh, but I don't like this for beginners. Uh, I wouldn't go into different categories like this. I'm sure they're doing millions and millions and millions of sales, uh, so that it makes sense for them to, to branch out. Uh, but I would start in one of these. So it'd be kitchen for this example, right? Uh, so we can go into kitchen and we can see all their products uh, in home and kitchen. We can see uh, the smasher right here. I'm not sure what this is for, maybe pesto or, or avocado. Uh, we see different you know, mats you can put down uh, you know, into your drawers, you know, liners, things like that. Uh, but you know, this gives you an idea of how someone else does it. Maybe not the best example, just because there's, they're all over the place. If we go back to kitchen and dining here, guys. So the niche down here, let's go to wine accessories. Uh, I love wine, <laughs> I drink wine uh, probably every other night, just have a few glasses before bed. Uh, relaxes me, uh, gets me ready for a fresh new start the next day. Uh, so it'd be kind of a cool niche for me to get into. We see a rabbit wine bottle opener corkscrew, uh, which just looks different, right? It looks like a new design, so I wanna open that up to look at that a little more deeply. Uh, we see a no touch door opener, touchless door opener tool. I'm not sure what that is, but definitely not for wine, most likely. Uh, two pack no touch door opener tool and button. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I keep going down here. Uh, wine pourers are pretty cool. Uh, I've seen one of those before though, wine stoppers. Uh, cap gun, cap gun bottle opener, creative bottle cap launcher and shooter, which is pretty neat right there. Uh, stainless steel ice bucket. Uh, fast wine aerator, enhanced the taste and smooth, so wine aerator. I haven't seen one of those personally, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so we have wine racks, uh, iron wall mount bottle openers are kind of cool. Wine cork uh, storage right here, which would be kind of uh, neat for people who like to drink wine. They like to store all their, um, you know, their corks uh, in a bin just to show, you know, how much wine they drink because it shows how fancy they are, right? Uh, and how, how uh, unique and classy they are. Uh, just like me, uh, wine stoppers are kind of cool. This one's new, I haven't seen one like this before. Uh, keep going down, keep going down, see if there's anything else. Were there any sub-niches for wine? Uh, wine education and games is kind of cool. Wine racks, cabinets, wine accessory sets. Uh, wine education would be interesting. 
Uh, let's see if there's any new, no new products there. Accessory sets, uh, obviously a ton here. 12 sheets, quarantine birthday, wine stickers, uh, wine carrier tote, which is kind of cool and unique. Uh, let's see here what else we got. We have wine bottle decorations right here, which would be cool because you can do every holiday. Uh, Amazon fan upgraded wine bottle protector. Uh, that's kind of cool. So that's cool, that's plenty of examples. You can see I really like wine here. Uh, just scrolling through this. Uh, you can see right here, again, no brand. Uh, just kind of some generic bolts here, uh, generic photos, uh, nothing crazy there, don't like those. $29 though, it's a, it's a good price point uh, for this, you know, this different kind of corkscrew uh, wine opener right here. And so if we, you know, get the sales going on this one, see what's going on. We see it's doing over $104,000 uh, in sales, which is absolutely uh, incredible. So this would be super interesting to me uh, and what's going on here. We see they launched uh, just back in early May right here. So uh, two or three months ago, and we could see, uh, you know, they're down to sales rank 706. So they got steady here, a uh, very popular product. Uh, you know, and again, they're not branded. So again, someone is just coming to come in with a new product, uh, you know, just like this, you know, undercut them with price or, or, you know, be design 2.0 or have a better listing. They're going to take over this, this guy right here. So this guy's in the short term. Yeah. You're making a lot of money right now, but what if you could do $106,000 for the rest of your life, right? Or anything like that. So take that into account here. So maybe you go into the wine niche, right? There's, there's plenty of opportunity here. If this guy's doing 106,000 out of only 126 reviews and four uh, stars there, that's absolutely insane. Uh, so I'm sure it's just like this for other wine uh, goods right here. Uh, plenty of opportunities, plenty of niches to dive into uh, and everything like that. So let's hop into niche number six, guys. I, you know, thanks for hanging with me. I know this is a long video. Uh, I'm actually doing this one uh, right into my co-working space. I have some, some visitors staying over uh, our place, so I couldn't make videos there. Uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to you know, do some do more videos for you guys and, and get get you guys, you know, how my brain works and everything like that. I uh, necessarily, you know, YouTube videos are hard for me, so I'm just trying to, you know, get some content out there for you guys, you know, get, get you into my head and get you into, you know, the thousands of hours of product research I've, I've already done. Uh, and that way you guys can use this for your own. I don't think scripted product research videos are always the best just because you don't see how the brain is turning, right? You don't see what, what I'm thinking about or, you know, how I'm scrolling through things or what I'm looking at, uh, things like that. So I appreciate you guys, you know, who stuck around uh, on this video this long. I feel like you guys are the ones who actually get, you know, what I'm putting out here and understanding how important this is uh, to understand the mindset and all that good stuff. But you know who you are. I appreciate it. Uh, but niche number six, guys, is patio lawn and garden. Obviously, we're in the summertime, so uh, this is going to have a little uptick, which is fine. It's just something you have to be aware about. Uh, not all products are going to have, you know, uh, you know, a high uptick in the summer. They're going to be year round. Even if you do pick a summer product, as long as you know what you're getting into, it's not so bad. I actually, like some seasonal products, uh, just because it keeps away some competition, uh, just because it's different uh, and everything like that. But obviously, uh, patio lawn and garden. Uh, we just see these two, three top products right here. We know that new weird products are coming out all the time, especially the zap bugs uh, and kill bugs, swimming pool wall and tile brush. Uh, this one's like, looks like a new design I haven't seen before, uh, but we can pick our subcategory uh, down here. So, so snow removal is probably not a great one right now. Uh, farm and ranch would be interesting. If you had a farm and ranch, this would be a fun one to go into. Uh, grills and outdoor and cooking, gardening. Let's do, uh, let's do gardening here. So this would be an interesting one. Uh, obviously we have hundreds more, uh, it feels like hundreds more of some niches right here. Uh, we can see the bug zappers here. Don't sell pest repellers. They're actually banned on Amazon. Uh, for the most part, you might have to have special permission. Uh, I've been seeing more and more with higher reviews, but uh, I know most of these get taken down within a month or two once Amazon figures out what they're doing. Uh, so let's go down here to see if we can figure out uh, anything that might be a good idea or something we can expand on and look into. So we have fly trap bags, outdoor disposable. Uh, so I haven't seen fly trap bags before. I've seen those little fly strips that come down. Uh, we have little green emojis here, 20 bucks for ratings. Uh, that's not a lot of ratings. So he's doing about 5,000 here a month, which isn't so bad. Uh, pictures are very generic, uh, of course. We can see here you got kind of steady right here. It's just dipping lower and lower, which is okay. Uh, 5,000 is a little low for me. Let's just go back and see if we can find another idea. Uh, let's try to find a subcategory here. Hand tools, garden sculptures, and statues. Uh, gloves, protective gear, greenhouse. Ooh, greenhouse and accessories. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, we see an actual greenhouse right here. A greenhouse window opener automatic. Uh, solar powder temperature control vent opener. Okay, so that's a little more advanced here, uh, but something you can look into for sure. Uh, let's keep going down. 
keep going down greenhouse film clip okay that could be interesting uh, very simple product right here uh, again not crazy brandable or uh, you know easy to expand on but you know if it's got good sales it's a good place to start and you can start building your brand around it uh, but our sales won't pop up here for some reason so uh, maybe not the best example there uh, but you guys can see what I'm doing here right I'm just looking for uh, ideas here in the gardening uh, area we see more clips right here if they're on this top sellers list even if we didn't see uh, you know their sales right there if they're on this list for a reason because Amazon's ranking them as you know a new product uh, that has you know the top you know what was it like 32 uh, it's in the top 32 of sales and gardening supplies which is you know Amazon's massive so you know that's a good amount of sales there uh, we see greenhouse wood uh, mini walk in greenhouse okay so this is cool uh, I like this so this is uh, an indoor mini greenhouse so you can see it's just a little plastic wrap uh, essentially probably with some little metal rods uh, not very big it'd be very easy to compact and to um, or do you, a box a carton right so you can ship it and get FBA fees down uh, we can see that uh, you know the branding is poorly done the photos are poorly done uh, price point is good to go it's actually an FBM and nine FBA uh, so let's look at sales there I'm not sure uh, what to expect here to be honest with you it could be a little lower uh, since we're getting down that list so it says one sale for the month. I, I don't buy that completely, uh, but uh, maybe this is not a perfect niche. Maybe the sales aren't uh, as high up here for other categories. Uh, so let's go back to patio lawn and garden. Uh, we can do pest control, outdoor uh, heating, farm and ranch. So let's try farm and ranch here, guys, now. Uh, so you have the same products, of course. Uh, let's keep going down. We're trying to find something new and different. Uh, let's see, super handy fogger machine, disinfectant fogger uh sunflower seeds let's go to page two here uh let's see let's see venus fly trap let's see we'll upgrade solar fountain powered that's kind of cool uh so this is more of a electronic but more for outside again anytime you see this upgrade right here that means they're most likely just a chinese seller trying to get a quick buck for their new design for the year uh, and you know capitalize on the summer sales if you make a high quality product, you don't need to upgrade every single year, uh, your, you know, your solar fountain right here. If you make it great, it should last for five years, right? And you're gonna build upon that. People are gonna talk about it. People are gonna know your brand because we're gonna make sure that, you know, we you know, pay extra attention to that uh, when we're making our listing. You know, when you see bullets like this, when you see that black isn't capitalized, that means there's an opportunity here because, you know, if this guy's doing sales, which, you know, is the first thing we should actually look at, but if this guy's doing great sales, then we know we could beat him out with just simple, you know, branding, making a better listing, uh, making a high quality product that's made to stick around uh, $6,421 per month is pretty good. Uh, let's go to, I kind of like this product. Uh, so let's go to uh, solar uh, fountain here and let's see what the niche looks like as a whole. Uh, we see 2020 upgrade, 2020 newest. Uh, again, I, I hate this. Uh, let's stick around for the long run. Let's not just get the quick upgrade and the quick buck. Okay, so look at the sales here. We see uh, 7,000, 57,000, 470,000, 556,000, 532,000, uh, 37,000, 591,000. So uh, we can see that this is crazy sales. Uh, 91 review count for 37,000, uh, 65 review count for 57,000. Okay, so we know we could be new sellers, you know, in this and, and get a piece of the pie, right? Especially we know we're going to be around for the long term, you know, and I don't need $556,000 in sales per month. I actually don't want that. It's a lot of overhead costs. That's that you have to buy so much inventory to keep up with this momentum. I'd rather start, you know, with 5,000, 10,000, work my way up, get the profit, get the product perfect, and then start to scale from that. And because I, I know I'm not in this business for the short, you know, quick buck. I'm in this business for the long run. I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm here to make the best product. I'm here to brand my product. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here to put crappy goods on and just make a quick buck. So you can see there's huge potential here. Obviously, this is going to be more uh, of a summer product. But again, that's just something we take an account and, and plan for, right? And so we see, uh, you know, different designs right here, uh, different designs. We can, you know, figure out which design uh, is the most popular or maybe find a new design uh, that has, you know, you know, interest on Pinterest or, or Instagram, things like that. And we can figure out what people want and, and give it to them. So we can see that niche is great just because it's such high demand uh, for such simple products. Uh, we go back to new releases. Let's get to the seventh and final niche, guys. Uh, again, I know this is a long one, uh, but I hope you guys are getting some crazy value for it. If you are, 
uh, please smash that like button. Uh, that helps me you know, share this video to more and more people. Uh, YouTube actually shows it more if we do that. If you have any questions at all about product research or anything like that, I'll put them in the comments down below. I don't mind answering questions. I actually answer uh, all my YouTube uh, comments personally. And so that's you know, a quick way to get in touch with me. Uh, and you know, just chat a little bit or you know, get your question answered, things like that. So we're in pet supplies, why I like pet supplies, why I love pet supplies, I should say, is that people will do anything for their dog or cat or their pet or even a hamster or a pet squirrel for God's sake. If you have an animal and it's your pet, you love that like it's your sister or your brother, or your mother, or your father. And what I've seen with selling products in the pet supplies area is that people don't just buy one product or you know skimp on the price right they don't want the cheapest product they actually think you know if they buy a higher price product which it should be right you should always try to provide more value you know at a higher price point but if they buy a 50 dollars product versus the 20 dollars product they think they're getting a better quality product uh, for their pet you know it's just it's just a bias right if that's at a higher price it's got a higher quality that's the that's the way we think about things and so that's great in the pet brand as well and also people will window shop on you know in pet supplies they'll they won't buy just a dog collar right they're gonna buy a dog collar they're gonna buy treats they're gonna buy uh, all sorts of things right <laughs> and i know this because i've done it myself and i've seen it on my other listings and i've seen it when advertising on other listings that people you know just buying dog food are gonna buy my random a pet product that has nothing to do with dog food. It's just pet, it's in the pet niche in general. And they buy it on that listing like, what? That just means they're window shopping. That means they're, they're adding more than one thing in their cart. They're, they're paying more because they want, uh, you know, a better life for their pet, which is awesome. And so, you know, pet supplies, cat supplies, dog supplies, is a perfect niche to get into. Uh, you can do, you know, supplements, obviously, uh, that's more, uh, you know, getting that manufactured here in the USA and all that good stuff, but there's lots of tools, lots of toys, uh, and it goes on forever. <laughs> there's a dog pool here. This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, three ratings right here. Again, what is this? What is this? This is a terrible listing. Uh, cute puppers right here. Uh, but if we go into Helium 10, let's take a look uh, at sales real quick. We can see 5,000, 10,000 right here. Uh, they, they're actually uh, in stock right here in July 2nd. So that means they're out of stock. So that probably means they sold out. So it looks like they're doing a little better and they just stocked out right here. Uh, while I get more inventory, so actually do probably doing a little more or could potentially be doing a little more. Obviously with this 48 inch one, we have a $54 price point, which is fantastic. Uh, but let's go to the, um, you know, there's no shortage of dog toys and, and dog supplies. I wish I could go through them all, but uh, for time's sake, it's already a longer video. So let's just do this one uh, as a great example here. And let's do foldable dog pool. So scrolling down here, we can see going with uh, 3,600 views, high price point though, uh, three, uh, reviews here at 53, 828, 32, 47. Uh, let's go to Helium 10 here, look at sales. So the first one here is doing $1.7 million per month. Uh, maybe that's a little off, uh, or maybe they're just that good. Uh, that's absolutely insane. Uh, 10,000 here, 52,000, 39,000, 74,000, 76,000, 175,000. So most likely we're not on the right keyword because they're not uh, in, you know, in, in you know, re revenue order per se. Uh, so maybe not the best keyword here. Uh, but the top guy has 3,600 reviews, which is not a lot of reviews actually for this many sales. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, 47 reviews, 43 reviews, 74,000. Uh, so we have you know, low reviews right here from high sales. And so what we have to do is figure out how to make this different and better. Uh, and how to brand it better, right? So this has you know really low you know ratings right here. Uh, let's see, we have different colors, different designs. So we have to figure out you know what people are looking for. So we know this guy's the top seller with 3,600 reviews. Uh, but it's just you know again, it's just a generic little pool here. You know, if there's a brand name like right here. You can see where my cursor is. If for some reason, I don't know if this is for everybody, but I'm guessing this is for everybody. If there's a you know a nice logo here, a nice brand, I would perceive more value in this product right here than this product right here, right? If there's no brand on here, if I don't see anything, I'm gonna perceive more value for something that's branded and that's established because to me that's like, okay, there's a whole company behind this product. There, you know, that's, that's gonna back me up if something goes wrong or that's, you know, that's done all the research and homework uh, to, to make sure that this product is great and, and awesome. What's cool about this product as well is it's foldable, so I'm sure it comes in a little box like this. So FB fees are, are super low. Uh, if you're selling with, you know, three, three reviews here and doing super well, uh, then that means there's opportunity, of course. And so there's, you know, and there's just endless ways to branch out uh, and brand this, right? You know, you see this little brand right here, maybe do something a little bigger. Uh, we go down, we go down. I see red ones, we see blue ones. Uh, so we can see, uh, we have all different ideas right here. You know, don't do this. Uh, this is terrible. 
Uh, but you know, let's click into this top guy doing 1.7. I wanna see what their listing looks like compared to the rest. And so we know that they're doing the most in the industry uh, by far. Uh, bullets are okay. Uh, listing is uh, okay. It's got it's very informational, very infographic. Uh, not the best. We go down here. Uh, you know, not bad, not bad. But definitely could be better. So there's even room for improvement uh, on this guy. We can see how seasonal is though. So that's something we'd have to uh, take into account. Uh, to make sure that you know we're, we're doing inventory planning and know what to expect in the summer months versus uh, the winter months is actually not that big of a dip. It goes down to like 35 sales rank right here, but it only goes up to 547. Uh, so that means they're still getting you know good amount of sales actually up here uh, during that time. But there's definitely enough demand to go around, right? They can't keep in stock. So if you have five, six reviews, uh, you could get going on this pretty quickly. And if you're there for the long run, like I said a hundred times this video that you're gonna make that product better than most people's. You're not gonna make the newest version, right? You're gonna make the quality, you know, the most quality, you know, dog pool out there that lasts, right? And you're gonna brand it, and you're gonna do a better listing than them. And so if you know if guys doing four or five reviews are doing 10, 20, 30,000 in sales, that means you can come along and do just the same thing. Uh, so I, you know, I hope this guy's, this video I know is a long one, but I hope it was helpful. I hope you got into my brain a little bit and use these seven niches, right? You're not limited to these seven niches, but these are seven great niches uh, for all the reasons I listed that, you know, products change all the time. There's super high demand. Uh, you know, there's just sub niches that go on forever, you know, just like wine accessories uh, and, and things like that. There's wine education and all that good stuff. So use those seven niches uh, and get going with your product research again. Uh, make sure you guys watch uh, more videos on my channel about product research if you're trying to find uh, more and more ideas. Don't ever give up, right? Uh, product research takes a while. Don't ever rush it. Uh, if you rush things, you're going to get in trouble. Again, these are all product ideas I'm finding on just the spur of a moment, right? So uh, I know they're not perfect. I know they're not uh, winners, but uh, you could deep dive into each one of these and maybe find a winner out of all of them. But that's exactly the process of how I find a bunch of ideas uh, and then just start, you know, digging more and more into it. So that's the step number one, guys, but it should get the ball rolling for you guys. Uh, again, I'll put some more uh, product research videos on the screen here that go into the more complete uh, dive into everything. But uh, make sure you watch. Uh, you know, all my videos on product research, learn all about it, all my strategies, uh, and make sure you uh, comment down below if you got any questions at all. I'm here to help, but that is it guys, and we'll see you on the next one.